Hi, so I just flew in here from Chicago last night and I had about a two hour flight and like any 24 year old, I had to find a way to pass the time. So I had a choice. I was either going to sleep or listen to music. And since I'm a music junkie, I decided I want to listen to music. And there's about seven tracks that I wanted to have this trip. And those seven tracks, uh, I needed to find a way to put them in a form where I could actually listen to them. So I had a choice. I could either go to the record store and buy the tracks uh, from th those specific artists and buy seven of these for about $100, or I could download those tracks to an MP3, create a playlist that's specifically tailored for my trip. Now, what do you think is the best option? Raise your hand if you think buying those seven CDs to get those specific tracks is the best option. I see one guy up there and... <laughs> Uh, let's talk after this. <laughs> um, I, 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 think, I think everyone, I think it's unanimous that downloading the MP3s and creating the playlist is the best option. So why is it the best option now? What we've discovered is that things have become unbundled. The internet has allowed us to unbundle, uh, unbundle things like music. The definition of unbundling is to take a product or service and give it to the consumer, just what the consumer needs instead of having to pay for everything, including the things the consumer doesn't need, right? So I've noticed this trend, and it's been happening in newspapers, it's been happening in books, it's been happening in music, and it's been happening in software, and I think that the next, th the next thing to be unbundled is an industry that you're familiar with, and that's education. That red line indicates inflation of education for the past 28, 32 years. And these are the companies that believe that they can disrupt this education the way Napster disrupted music. And they're disrupting it using this thing called an MOOC. An MOOC is a massive open online course. And they're using it the same way Napster, iTunes, and Spotify use an MP3 to change the music industry. So an MOOC, uh, th these are four regular words, seemingly regular, but they have extraordinary meanings behind them. Massive means that no longer do you need a 400-person lecture hall. Now you can teach this course all over the world, and there's no wait list. Anyone can take it. And this means you can take classes, especially from Harvard, MIT, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, you name it. Open. Open is one of the most important parts of that to me. Open means that anyone can take it. If you, have, if you have access to internet, you can take it, it's free. That means the kid in Nebraska can figure out what major he wants to major in college before he even gets to college. He can try this out, and it doesn't cost him anything to be indecisive once he gets to college. Online. Now, online's been a very dirty word in the educational industry uh, for the past 15 years. People snub their nose at online until now. You're getting courses from the top schools, like I named before, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Stanford, MIT, the list goes on. You're getting the top information of the top professors. And the fact that it's online means that you can go back in your class and learn something again if you don't get it the first time. And the cool thing about that, and the cool thing about the fact that it's online is that you can also, if you have a problem with it, you can talk to any of the 200,000 people that are taking the class with you. So, that brings me to the next one, course. And I bet you're all thinking, of course, it's a course, it's, it's a class. But to me, that means it can be completed. And because it can be completed, that means you can take another course, and another, and another, and another. And that means that you can steer your learning. That's important to me because I think you can tell a story and you can get yourself closer to career market fit. You can tell a story to your potential employer why you picked this class, why you picked the next class. Well, what did that get you into that caused you to pick this next class as opposed to four years of college and then question mark? Uh, you know? So I think my, well, my call to action for anyone, whether they're in high school, college, or out of college, is to take your education and steer it. And I call this iterative education. And I think that... <sighs> I think that if you can steer your education, you can steer your passions to a career market fit. And my last word is to anyone out there listening, trust that you are smart enough to figure it out. Take control of your education and put it in your own hands. Thank you.